All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going over complex one, two, three, and four of the electron transport chain. I want to tell this video like a story. I want to try something different to see if it helps you guys understand this mechanism better. Now, complex one, two, three, and four are all protein structures that are embedded between the matrix of the mitochondria and the inner membrane space of the mitochondria. And its goal is to pump protons from the matrix side to the inner membrane side to establish a proton gradient to power ATP synthase. And what is ATP synthase? Well, ATP synthase is the last part of the electron transport chain. And what, what it basically does is it helps us make ATP. It generates the energy, but it needs protons to do it. Now, complex one, two, three, and four are Funny enough, very complex, but I want to make videos on each of them separately and go in further in depth more than this video. This is just a brief overview of what's going on. So let's begin. What's happening in complex one? So in complex one, we have here NADH plus H. This NADH plus H is coming from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. I mentioned in glycolysis, which happens in the cytosol, the NADH plus H is not able to cross into the mitochondria. It's not able to do that. So we use the malate aspartate shuttle, which I made a video on last time. And I mentioned that the malate aspartate shuttle helps us bring in NADH plus H into the matrix of the mitochondria for complex one. In addition, the Krebs cycle also brings in NADH plus H. So this is where the NADH plus H is coming from. These are electron carriers that are coming from the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And here's what's gonna happen. This NADH plus H, which basically are holding electrons, is going to enter complex one. And when it goes into complex one, it's gonna basically pass its electrons onto ubiquinone to hold. I made a whole video on ubiquinone, so please check that out. I'll put it a link in the description. But what it does, it holds, ubiquinone essentially holds onto the electrons temporarily. And when this happens, it energizes the complex one. It gives it a bunch of energy. Think about drinking a monster energy drink. You get a lot of energy, you feel really hyped up. This is what exactly happens. When electrons get passed to ubiquinone, it basically donates it to ubiquinone. Think about like a football game or a soccer game. You pass it to your player. That's what you do and the crowd cheers. That's exactly what's going on here. We're passing the electrons onto ubiquinone to hold. And when this happens, it charges, it supercharges complex one. And what happens is these protons that are sitting in the matrix are gonna get pumped into the inner membrane space because the complex one is supercharged. It's like charging up a battery. And when the battery is charged up, protons can willingly move from the matrix into the inner membrane space. That is complex one in the most basic form. Now, complex two is a little different. Complex two is not involved in pumping in protons into the inner membrane space. Instead, it is harvesting protons, rather electrons, from the Krebs cycle. So you'll notice that the succinate to fumarate is from the Krebs cycle. And from this step, if you'll recall from the Krebs cycle, FAD is involved. And remember, here is NADH. But what about FADH? We talked about FADH from the Krebs cycle. We, we generated from, we did FAD plus to FADH. This is what this process is right here. We transferred electrons from succinate to FAD plus to get FADH and out we got fumarate. So we didn't leave, a, we didn't forget about the FAD. That still needs to come along. That's holding electrons, valuable resources. So what's gonna happen is FADH is gonna come along and sit inside complex two, and it's gonna basically pass it onto ubiquinone, the same thing as complex one. It's gonna, FADH two is gonna pass on its electrons onto ubiquinone. It's gonna do like a soccer pass, like a football pass to its friendly player. So it's gonna pass it onto ubiquinone. 
However, it does not have the ability to pump protons. Even when it's doing the exact same thing as complex one, it's not able to pump in protons. It does not have that ability. So now, complex one and complex two are now rich with ubiquinone, holding electrons. So it's fully reduced. So now we're gonna to get to complex three. Now complex three is very simple. Ubiquinone is going to pass its electrons to cytochrome C. It's basically like a subunit. So it's gonna do another pass to its a friendly player, cytochrome C. And when this happens, it supercharges complex three, just like complex one. And when it's supercharged, it pumps in four protons to the inner membrane space from the matrix. So there's protons waiting here to be pumped in. So when complex three is supercharged, because ubiquinone has now passed its electrons to cytochrome C, it supercharges complex three, and now it's able to pump in protons from the matrix to the inner membrane space for ATP synthase. Now complex four. Complex four, what's gonna happen is we're gonna do one last transfer. Cytochrome C is gonna transfer its electrons onto oxygen. Now oxygen is the final electron acceptor. We're gonna give its electrons from cytochrome C to oxygen, and it's gonna merge with some protons to create water. This water is used throughout, oh, throughout your body. Now, if you notice, sometimes when you don't even drink water, you pee, right? You urinate. Still, if you don't even drink water, sometimes you still urinate. This is the, this right here, this water is what you're urinating. Okay, this is where it comes from. It's kind of interesting, right? And once again, once we pass on electrons from cytochrome C onto the oxygen, we supercharge complex four, and once again, we pump in protons to the inner membrane space from the matrix. So this is the matrix, right? And we've got protons sitting here. Not these ones, not these ones, but we have extra protons here, which will pump in to the inner membrane space because this is supercharged. Because once again, we passed on from the electrons from cytochrome C to oxygen. And that is the complex system overview. It's quite simple if you think about it. All you're just doing is passing down electrons down the entire chain here. Now, there's something you must know. This is kind of like an extra knowledge thing, but your biochemistry professor could ask you on it. And it's something that's actually quite important for you to know. Oxygen is very electronegative. Hopefully you know that from chemistry, organic chemistry. Due to its electronegativity nature, this is what pulls electrons towards oxygen. The reason we go from complex one to complex three to complex four, or complex two to complex three to complex four, is because oxygen is so electronegative, it's literally pulling these electrons down the pathway, down the chain to complex four. Because of all oxygen's electronegativity. That is super important to know. And so you probably heard me right now. I said that electrons are going from one to three to four. I did not say it's going from one to two to three to four. It does not do that. So let me reiterate that once again. So electron movement. So let's write this down. Um, let me do it yellow. Uh, electron movement. So electron movement has two options. It will either, so option one, it will go from complex one to complex three to complex four, or the other option is the electrons can go from complex two to complex three to complex four. That's, you know, that's the arrow. <laughs> Here, let me just do this. There, to complex four. Okay? It does not go from one to two to three to four. The electrons don't, so the electrons that are harvested from complex one 
Do not go through complex two. That's kind of meaningless because complex one and complex two are doing the same thing. We're passing electrons to ubiquinone. That's what complex one and complex two are doing. So it's really no point if we collected the electrons in this ubiquinone, which has, you know, it's fully reduced, why would you go to complex two? It does not make any sense because complex two is just gonna make more ubiquinone. So complex one and complex two, the ubiquinone we've got from that will go to complex three and then eventually complex four. So hopefully this is helpful. And so in the future videos now, I'm gonna go over complex one in depth, then two, then three, then four. So until next time, later.